Welcome everyone to Guru You. This is our second season and this is our second episode. And I am so excited and thrilled and really just happy to invite Patricia Cota Robles to be with us today. And I'm going to share with you about Patricia. If you don't know who Patricia is, just like I joked last week, you might be living under a rock. <laughs> Patricia is an internationally known teacher and co-founder and president of the nonprofit educational organization, Era of Peace, which sponsors her work and the annual World Congress on Illumination. Patricia was a marriage and family counselor for 20 years, and she now spends her time sharing the vitally important information she is receiving from the beings of light in the realms of illuminated truth. This information from on high is distributed for free through Patricia's website, www.eraofpeace.org in the form of monthly newsletters, weekly vlogs, free seminars, webinars, YouTube videos. There are so many ways to find Patricia's information, which is amazing. And again, all of it free, which is really a wonderful service to all of us. The divine intent of these celestial sharings is to give humanity encouragement, greater clarity, and understanding as we process through these wondrous but often challenging times. Patricia's philosophy is every person is precious and divine, regardless of how far his or her behavior patterns and life experiences may be from reflecting that truth. I love that sentence so much because we judge so much ourselves and our journey. Oh, we are not the victims of our lives. We are the co-creators of our lives. Now is the time to create the lives we have always dreamed about, and we are already having everything that we need to accomplish that pulsating within the divinity of our heart flame. Patricia, thank you so, so much for being here with us today. Well, you're welcome, Aurora. It's my pleasure. I'm delighted to be here. This is an exciting and powerful time on the planet, isn't it? It is. I feel like we discussed so much before we started. <laughs> so thank you for being here today. I wanted to ask you so many questions, but I didn't know where you wanted to begin. Well, you just go ahead. You go ahead and start and it'll evolve, I know, in perfect divine order. Sure. Why don't we start with the I am presence? Would you be willing to share with us how you experience and feel that we have this I am presence and how we work with it. Yes, I'll be glad to do that. That is such a critical part of the process that's unfolding at this moment. And uh, the I am presence, it's the God self within us. And we've called it all different kinds of names, you know, our higher self, our God self, our super conscious mind, Christ consciousness, myriad different terminologies that's talking about the divinity within us. And years ago, the Company of Heaven asked us to start understanding the magnitude of what this aspect of our own divinity really is. And just like when Moses spoke to the burning bush and said, who are you? The response was, I am that I am. I am Alpha, I am Omega, I am the beginning, I am the ending. Which really meant that our Father, Mother, God are all that is. The, the cosmic I am, the beginning and ending of all that is. And when we were breathed forth as these individualized expressions, sons and daughters of God, we were breathed forth as minuscule reflections of that all-encompassing presence of our Father, Mother, God, which means that within each and every one of us, we have that divine potential. And what the beings of light are sharing with us is that when we want to connect with that aspect, all we have to do is invoke our I am presence. And we can simply affirm, I am my I am presence. And when we do that, there is literally a shift that takes place, a multi-dimensional shift of consciousness that takes place that lifts us out of the quagmire of our fragmented and fear-based human ego through multi-dimensional frequencies into a higher aspect and connects us with that divinity. And this part of us has, for since our fall from grace eons ago, vibrated 
at a frequency above our earthly bodies and our four earthly bodies. And our I am presence has never descended below the frequencies of the fifth dimensional realms of perfection, which we're moving into as we move in this ascension process into the new earth. And so when we were beginning to experience a third dimensional reality, our I am presence breathed a step down frequency of itself into the fourth dimension that was referred to as our solar Christ presence. Now, that Christ consciousness is the level of enlightenment that we were all invested with through our I am presence and through our Father, Mother, God at our inception. And in the Christian dispensation, Jesus reflected that because he was reflecting that level of the path of divine love, of that higher level of enlightenment. And he was really modeling for us that this is the potential within all of us. And then our solar Christ presence stepped us down into an even denser frequency, which was our third dimensional planetary Christ presence. Well, since we've been moving through this ascension process, our I am presence has been projecting light from the fifth dimension through the solar aspect of our solar Christ presence in the fourth dimension into the third dimension. But we've now, over the last several decades, ascended into higher and higher frequencies of vibration. And since the birth, of this new decade, we have moved a quantum shift up the spiral of evolution. And what's important for us to understand now is that our earthly bodies, our physical, etheric, mental, and emotional bodies are now vibrating at a high enough frequency, the initial impulses of the fifth dimension, that our I am presence has been able to integrate into our heart flame and is no longer stepping down frequencies from higher dimensions. And this has just happened since the birth of this new decade. And one of the things that is so critical for us to understand, you know, our I am presence, it doesn't mean that we're all the full expression of that divinity, but the I am presence is now integrated through our four earthly bodies. And so is able to communicate on that uh, intuitive telepathic level in ways that we haven't experienced since our fall from grace eons ago, when we fell into such dense discord through a choice of using our thoughts and feelings, our creative faculties in ways that were not based in love. We just fell into denser and denser frequencies and we lost awareness of our I am presence and our solar Christ presence and our Christ, our planetary Christ presence. And we started creating this fragmented fear-based human ego. All of that is being reversed now. And we have moved into the initial impulse. Now, as Aurora will tell you, I don't ever want anybody to accept anything as truth just because somebody's told you it's true. But what the beings of light are really hoping for and encouraging us to do now is to start trusting and accepting that yes, there has never been a separation other than in our fragmented uh, consciousness of separation and duality. Our I am presence has always been there, but has been what we've referred to as that still small voice within. That is no longer the case. And even if you haven't recognized that more uh, comprehensive inner guidance within you at this point, since the birth of the uh, this new decade in January of 2020, it's only because we've gotten out of the habit of doing it. So we're still kind of ignoring that inner guidance and that inner voice. And what the beings of light are asking us to do now is to start trusting. Yes, I do have that inner guidance. And the I am presence is no longer this still small voice within. It's a powerful, 
intuitive inner knowing. And when we ask our I am presence for guidance and ask to be uh, assisted with problems and challenges, and then take the time to listen, you're going to realize, and you maybe are doing it already. Maybe it's just been, you've been having those aha moments where a challenge that you've dealt with for a long, long time, all of a sudden you see it with new eyes and a new perspective and have new ideas of uh, how to experiment with viable solutions, options. And in January of 2020, the beings of light said that because of the shifts that have taken place, we are now vibrating at a higher frequency and moving into this new decade, we were told by the beings of light that there is a new level of collaboration that is available to us and not understanding exactly what that meant. But they are saying that our interaction with the beings of light that are helping us, our own I am presence and the I am presence of every other person, they said we are now able to collaborate with the divinity within us in the company of heaven in ways that have never before been attempted. And of course, we had no idea what that meant, but I've been around a very long time and I've always trusted and known and never been led astray or disappointed by that guidance from the company of heaven. And then at the end of January, we started manifesting COVID. And I'm not saying that the beings of light created COVID, but what has happened is that the, what the result of that, this forced timeout on a global level, this pause where we are guided to stay at home and not interact and not communicate with everybody has created the space for this integrated I am presence to now guide us and communicate with us. People are awakening at record levels, hearing that inner voice, responding to that inner guidance. And the old paradigms and archetypes are beginning to be pushed to the surface, crumbling away as far as being dismantled. There's no turning back every electron of energy and all of those old distorted mutated patterns was originally God's light. So what our responsibility is, is transmuting that distorted energy back into light. So there has been a very profound shift of consciousness, whether we've consciously recognized it yet or not, you absolutely will. A profound shift of consciousness because we've all had to stop doing everything. And I realize that there are essential workers and people that haven't had that. A lot of people have left the planet, which is devastating and very, very sad. But the beings of light have said that this shift, and I want to share this because I think for me it was very comforting as I lost loved ones in this process and friends and people that we knew in this process is that because of this dramatic shift that has taken place many of the souls that have been here for a very long time which are the people predominantly that are leaving 80 percent of the people that are leaving are considered uh elderly people that they are being given the respite of going home with the heavenly realms saying, job well done. And all of us, all of the rest of us, and I'm certainly one of those older ones that, <laughs> that could be in that particular, but for all of the rest of us, regardless of our age, that aren't leaving the planet at this time, now we are being go going to be guided in new and powerful ways with new ideas and new archetypes to start creating a new reality as the old one is dismantled. There's no turning back. So knowing about the I am presence, asking your I am presence for guidance, and the beings of light are saying you are 
your I am presence. So don't just ask your I am presence as you would pray to somebody of being of light or God or or Jesus or Buddha or uh, Krishna or anybody outside of ourselves, but rather say, I am my I am presence and I am one with my Father, Mother, God, and then ask for that inner guidance and direction. And you're going to be astounded at what you start hearing and knowing because it is monumental. It's what we've worked with for lifetimes. And now, as the beings of light have said, our time is at hand. Oh, that's magnificent and exciting. I feel like uh, we did come back specifically to have this experience, this knowing, to hold space for the dismantling and to remember our divinity. And it's so refreshing and or exciting to know that as you receive this information, like you said, we may not see an outside reflection of it immediately, right? There's still dismantling unfolding, there's still changes happening. We're not all kumbaya just yet. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> but it is an awareness that we're headed there and that there is all of this love and support around us to co-create that as the template for our future, starting with this now moment. That's right, Aurora. And one thing that helps to understand is that, as I mentioned earlier, even the most mutated, gross uh, patterns manifesting in the outer world are that way because our fragmented human egos took our gift of life, our breath and our thoughts and our feelings and created these gross mutations uh, aligned with hatred and fear and prejudice and separation and all of those things. But that energy that was used was our pure life source and our pure God light. Everything is from God. So now once we uh, connect with our I am presence and when we're invoking this light now, it flows into the physical plane and it pushes everything that conflicts with that light to the surface. So one of the things that is happening is we are manifesting new levels of unity consciousness and comprehensive divine love. So everything that conflicts with that, which are all of the painful situations manifesting in the outer world, are coming to the surface. So the problem is, is that we can easily see all the garbage being pushed to the surface. What we don't see as easily is the incredible light that is pushing it to the surface. So yes, absolutely. Uh, and one of the things that helped me too with the beings of light said, what we've lost awareness of in many instances is that we are truly multi-dimensional beings and that the when we're invoking patterns of change and perfection it first manifests as a template and archetype in the realms of cause which is where god's first cause of perfection exists then it begins magnetizing from the realms of cause into the world of effects, which is the physical plane. So we magnetize it and draw it down through our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. And so the physical plane of earth, when we try to judge what's going on by observing the physical plane, we're making a big mistake because the physical plane of earth is the last dimension that, that is reflecting these changes and it is the very least real of all of the dimensions that we abide in because it's full of the illusions of separation and duality and those kinds of things. So we need to, it takes a lot of levels of trust and that inner knowing, but that's what our I am presence helps us do. It's that heart-based feeling of love and connection and knowing that the light of God is always victorious and that we are that light. And that's why we're here. We've been preparing for lifetimes to be the open door for this light and to be able, the greatest part of our mission is to be able to stay focused on the light in the face of all of the adversity that's being pushed to the surface. Because where our attention is, there we are. 
And if we're focusing on all of the uh, garbage that is out there, then we're actually empowering it, which is the opposite of what we want to do. So our I am presence is communicating with us in powerful ways. So when we listen, we hear that inner knowing, you know, one of the things, and Aurora, you and I mentioned that earlier, one of the things that's happening at this accelerated moment of 2021 now, moving into the full embrace of the second year of this new decade, this life transforming decade that we're co-creating with the company of heaven, is that our I am presence, in order for us to really uh, move up, we have to the difference with what's going on now is we are ascending, but we're taking the earth and humanity and all life on this planet with us. So everybody is raising up in energy, vibration, and consciousness. So the higher our vibrations, which are determined by how we live our lives, the kinds of thoughts we think, what our actions that we take, the food that we eat, the music that we listen to, the, our meditation and our being in nature. There's myriad things that help us go within and be at peace in our heart and raise us up. And this is the kind of thing that we need to listen to our inner guidance. And our I am presence is telling us. I think sometimes we ignore it when our I am presence maybe is telling us to um, not eat things that we love and consider entertainment and things like that, or to not do things that uh, that have been fun for us and playful for us, but that is not constructive and is actually holding us back and, and pulling us into the uh, muck and mire in the outer world, then we resist that inner voice and we don't want to hear it. So pay attention. And when you're getting that inner intuitive guidance, respond to it and i guarantee you the rewards of what you will begin experiencing on a physical level through your body on a level of inner harmony and peace on the harmony with your job your friends your loved ones you're going to begin recognizing that no amount of outer world for instance using food as entertainment is worth that incredible sense of love and inner peace that you have when you have treated your body or connected with your body as a as a temple of the living god that it is your i am presence rewards you and your body elemental the intelligence of your body rewards you in wondrous ways it's so true and it's so funny because I think a lot of us, especially over COVID, potentially had had that nervous eating thing where we don't know what the future looks like. And so it's so easy to go to the comfort foods when if we were listening to our bodies, our bodies were not interested in connecting with any of, of that kind of energy at all. In fact, again, it was this opportunity to say, okay, how can I shift this and raise my vibration and connect to the higher realms? Because the lighter that we're eating and like you said when we spoke earlier it, it's not the that we're meant to have vegetarians and people who eat meat and, and all of that it's not about one way of doing it right. but it's about listening and we're not really used to listening we've really disconnected or at least we have for a long time and this is a perfect opportunity to start connecting again and tuning in to how we feel yeah and not only not listening but deliberately eating food to stuff it all back down again you know whether it's something that's coming up we've used it as a as a stress relief they've teased about that about the COVID 15 that everybody's been locked down is gaining 15 pounds at home because there's nothing to do so you eat out of boredom you eat out of stress you know and of course people have gone through incredibly challenging things financially and health wise and with the economy and with uh just their jobs and all kinds of things so we're all learning amazing things with all of this and some of them very challenging and very painful but what we are recognizing what i've really just been observing is how hearts have been open with for instance 
what happened with the essential workers. I mean, we all see people uh, around us all the time, you know, and just take for granted that the grocery store workers are going to be there or the trash collectors are going to be there or the uh, people that do cleaning service and those kinds of things. And, and we love them and we acknowledge them and we're grateful for them. But now we're realizing, my gosh, their lives are in danger because they're trying to keep the rest of us safe and keep the world going, you know, and what's gone on with first responders and nurses and doctors and, and all of the people. And that, the, the political end of it and all of the discord about that is nothing more than our lower human ego having a temper tantrum because it knows that when the God self takes command and we move to a place of truly recognizing and revering the divinity in every person and we start treating the elemental kingdom and which is all of the animals and plants and nature and the water and the air we breathe and the food we eat and the elemental kingdom and all of humanity with love and respect and everybody is doing that the world will change and our fragmented human ego that functions strictly to keep us separated, to keep us fighting, to keep this us against them consciousness with the greed and corruption and abuse of power and all of that no longer is able to control us when people are coming from this heart-based place of genuinely loving and revering every other part of life on this planet. So we've opened our hearts in new ways. And of course, there's still the uh, some of the challenges out there and some of the discord but wonderful changes are taking place and what the beings of light keep saying there is no turning back right. these paradigms are being dismantled and they're going to be replaced with the new patterns of perfection new templates new archetypes and we're working with transmuting the negativity and I'll just mention a, a bit about that because this is a time when the negativity is being pushed to the surface at an accelerated pace because we have to clear that out before the new can manifest. You know, there's no saying cancel, cancel and just eliminating it. And if we think of all of the negativity, every bit of pain and suffering that's brought into our awareness as god's precious gift of life that has been distorted into this gross mutation and it's coming back to us and to our attention think of it as like a like a battered and abused child that's coming back to be loved to be purified and to love it back into its higher vibration of what it was in the beginning and the most powerful frequency to be able to do that is the gift of our Father, Mother, God's violet flame. And I know many of you probably have heard about the violet flame. It's such an important part of this moment. The violet flame consists of the sapphire blue flame of our Father, God's divine will and power and the crystalline pink radiance of our Mother, God's divine love and reverence for life. And when those two energies merge, they become the violet flame of God's infinite perfection. And our Father, Mother, God, and the beings of light have said, this is the most important energy at this time to transmute this negativity back into light. And the reason that it is so prevalent at this time is because we have recently moved into the full embrace of the Aquarian age. We just completed the age of Pisces. We moved through that uh, time frame of adjustment as the energies from Pisces start receding before the full momentum of the energies of the Aquarian age take full dominion. And that ebb of energy, that period of time, lasts from about 150 to 300 years. And it's called the dawn of the new age. And during that time, the legions of light and powers that be evaluate what the progress has been on earth 
throughout, for instance, the Piscean age. And what would be the most important lessons and things for us to learn in the new energies that are coming in? Each of the ages is reverberates with one of the 12 solar aspects of deity. The Piscean age was the sixth solar aspect of deity. And the Aquarian age is the seventh solar aspect of deity, which is the violet flame. So the Aquarian age for this 2000 plus year cycle, the most predominant energy bathing the earth is going to be the violet flame of God's infinite perfection. And this is the energy that's most powerful in transmuting the misqualified energy back into light. And later in our sharing, I'm going to share with you a meditation that's been given to us by the company of heaven for this moment to utilize this purging and cleansing that's taking place so that we can draw in the new patterns for the new earth and more quickly get our heads above the mud puddle of the surfacing negativity so that we can hear that inner voice without even having to struggle to do it and have that guidance that is always working for our individual and collective highest good and our full divine potential. I'm so excited for that because also as we were speaking earlier, it's very easy for us to go out and look for guidance in all different kinds of places and then get some misinformation or misguided information. And like we were also saying, not necessarily with any intent to harm, um, but not everybody knows exactly what energetic stream they're calling in or channeling and or if if my brain is the computer by which all the information comes, I have a perspective and so I have to try to filter out my perspective as much as I can in order to be that clear and perfect channel. But you know some of it's some of Aurora is still going to come through in that channel, right? So it's the awareness that, the more we can feel into our own individual, like you, you know, you're saying, using ourselves as a barometer to know what is my truth. And if I'm calling in my I am presence and listening to that, I will get closer and closer and closer to having the awareness of my divinity and what feels aligned for me in this now moment. Yes, Aurora. And, you know, what we're being told by the company of heaven is that even though it's this maybe not as obvious when we just look around that people are awakening by the millions and so a lot of people this feels new it's not we've been all preparing for lifetimes for this moment but they are reaching out and wanting somebody to help them and somebody to guide them and we've all done that we've all been you know on our search we've gone through all of those things but this is a time when we don't need to do that uh, nearly as much as we think we do and that the I am presence is guiding us far more tangibly than ever before since our fall from grace and the wonderful name of your program is you, Guru You and someone told me one time well Guru is revealed in the spelling of the name it's G you are you and <laughs> putting you back into the divinity within your own heart flame but what happens and this is just to help people understand of, of not trying only your i am presence knows what your divine plan is knows why you're here and knows what the next step of your unfolding divine plan is and when we go what happens when we go through the near-death experience you know we have People, I studied that for a long time because of my counseling and so many people had had those experiences. And I studied all the research I could get my hands on and consistently the reports were almost identical regardless of religious beliefs or socioeconomic or education or anything. And people consistently talked about being aware that they were out of their body and then passing through a dark tunnel into the light. And what the beings of light have shared and explained with us, what that dark tunnel is, it's just the sea of heavy negative energy around the earth. It's our negative thoughts and feelings and patterns of war and things that haven't been transmuted 
that have been pushed up and haven't been transmuted back into light again. And where the concept of hell came from is that when uh, we go through the near-death experience or our death experience, we're magnetized into our light vibration. So some people, if they've led really difficult lives, uh, deliberately abusing their power and that kind of thing, they might be pulled into this psychic astral mess, which is just chaos. That is never the divine plan. And Archangel Michael always sends his legions to them immediately and says, you're trapped here. This isn't where you're supposed to be. Come with me and I'll take you into the inner schools of learning. But these mischievous souls realize that they can influence people in the outer world sometimes by that. Now, much of that has been cleared, not the negative energy, but those trapped souls have been taken to the inner schools of learning. But what happens is once we get through into the light, then we are connecting with the beings of light and the realms of the lumen truth, which can guide us and through our I am presence in accurate and correct ways. And so when you're going to somebody outside of yourself for guidance, and my experience is 99.9% .9 of people that are doing readings and channelings and that kind of thing are very sincere and have a, a, a real desire to be helpful and just don't understand that you need to keep reaching through into the realms of truth. And what my personal experience, I never did readings or anything like that, but when my per what my personal experience was, is that once I moved through, and I didn't have a near-death experience, this was a, a part of my process and, and evolutionary opening and awakening. Once I moved into the realms of light, then I was clearly shown that to tell people things and try to guide them and give them information that their I am presence has not revealed to them yet is interference and that we can actually lead people astray and have them do something other than what their divine plan is for that moment. So many people that you're working with and are out there will be teaching you how to go within and how to connect and maybe clearing a block or something within your energy field so that you can hear your own I am presence. But from the highest realms of truth, no one is telling you things that you need to move to San Diego or you need to do this job or quit your job. If that's true, and it very well may be, you'll get that overwhelming inner prompting and intuitive knowing from within. So the key for this moment is to really start trusting that inner guidance that we're getting from our I am presence. Yes, empowerment, right? So we all have the information. We're afraid to access it. It's very easy to give the power to someone else and say, you tell me what to do. <laughs> right. I don't know what to do. You tell me. And it's like, no, no. In fact, recently I had some of my people ask me about certain things that there was no way I was going to answer, uh, you know, to, to do this or not to do this. Well, feel into your body, put your hands on your heart. What does it feel like if you choose to do it? What does it feel like if you don't choose to do it? Let your body help tell you, hear your guidance, just slow down so that you're not in the static of co everyone's commentary and opinions on the matter. What's your opinion on the matter? How do you feel? really really important yes it is that's a really <laughs> critical part of and and knowing that no matter how much you love somebody no matter how much you trust the information i tell people this all the time for all of us that are sharing information from the realms of truth we are still the information is still being filtered through our consciousness so we are interpreting it in alignment with what we know and understand and comprehend and that may be an entirely different interpretation than your I am presence wants you to have about that. So listen to everything as food for thought and then take it into your heart, see how it resonates for you. 
And I'll also share that if you're feeling confused or it doesn't feel aligned or it feels like uh, you're getting information that's uh, painful to receive or not um, better stated, not feeling loving from a loving place, your, your I am presence and the powers of all the light that is, is always going to share with you information from that loving place. We're always loved and supported and guided always. We are. Yeah. And your I am presence always works toward your highest good. And I know I've had people tell me my I am presence tells me I need to eat a pint of ice cream every day. And that probably isn't true. <laughs> Maybe once in a while it would be fun, but not every day. <laughs> well, that might be your inner child speaking, not your I am presence. <laughs> Because for sure my I am presence is not in agreement with my inner child on that one. <laughs> one other thing I'd like to share, Aurora, before we do our, when we do our meditation, is that part of understanding about the I am presence is that there is no separation. And uh, we actually are one with every other man, woman, and child on earth, with the entire elemental kingdom, with Mother Earth herself, with the angelic kingdom, the beings of light. And when we say we are one, that isn't just an abstract lofty platitude or religious rhetoric. It is a profound truth. And so one of the things that has happened now that this shift has taken place and our I am presence has integrated, the beings of light are telling us that humanity's earthly bodies, our physical, etheric, mental, and emotional bodies are vibrating at a more compatible frequency with every other person's I am presence and their earthly bodies as well. And so when we say, for instance, I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of every man, woman, and child, what I experienced decades ago was when Archangel Michael is actually the one that taught me this process, it was like an explosion of light going through my heart and a ray of light going into the heart of the I am presence of every man, woman, and child, alerting them, the I am presence, that someone is invoking light on their behalf and they stood in readiness to receive that light. Then the I am presence that only works toward our highest good that knows exactly what our divine plan is and what our mission is and where we are in that process, will take that light. And regardless of what we have invoked, if we've invoked healing and what the person needs is abundance, the I am presence will utilize that light in alignment with that person's divine plan. So we don't need to figure out how to fix everybody. We just need to invoke the light. Well, what I've experienced recently since the birth of this new decade is that we are now actually since the birth of this year, since the beginning and the shifts that have taken place in uh, January and with the uh, pause, the forced time out that we've been in, is that since our bodies are vibrating our I am presence is vibrating at a more compatible frequency because our bodies are. When we say I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of every person, our I am presences literally are merging into this magnificent luminous being of light that is pulsating and our unified heart flames are cradling the entire planet Earth and all her life. And so then when we're in, it's a collective I am presence and our individual gifts, talents, abilities, divine potential is all part of our individual I am presence. So this luminous being that envelops the entire planet Earth and cradles the Earth in its heart flame, in our unified heart flame, is reflecting through every individualized I am presence and as one monumental, all-encompassing force field of light for the earth as well. So that's another part of what we're gonna be working with in this 
meditation that we're going to be doing so that we can begin experiencing what that means to be this collective luminous presence and working with these new frequencies of the violet flame because we are in this higher place we can withstand higher frequencies of the violet flame than we've ever been able to withstand before so it's a powerful time oh it is and it's so exciting and i i really i'm in gratitude for this process because we do speak about this oneness but it is in in some way it is abstract, right? Because if we had the awareness, we'd be treating each other very differently. And, and again, we're we're starting to catch on to it and catch up with it and have the awareness of it and, and still trying to uh, connect that mind-heart connection and have an awareness that when we harm someone, we're harming ourselves, right? Even when we speak in the quantum, you know, I know that this couch is more space than solid or matter, but, but my brain... Mm -hmm. Even though my wisdom knows that, my brain says, but you're sitting on it, so it must just be solid. <laughs> right. Um, well, one of the things that happens is that people, they have a lot of uh, anger and a lot of discord with other people in the physical plane. So they, they have this feeling, if I don't want to be one with that person because I don't like their energy, I don't like who they are. That is not our I am presence pulsates in the realms of light and none of that lower fragmented karmic uh, discord is involved with this process. It is the highest, purest part of our full divine potential. That's what our I am presence and that's the only aspect that is merging into this luminous collective I am presence is the highest divine God potential of every single person as a son and daughter of God. So uh, it's easy to do that. And we just transcend all of this other stuff that's vibrating far below in different frequencies. And we can project light into that. You know, we're holding the earth in our heart um, of this luminous being and we're projecting light into this. But the, the divinity of our heart flame is preventing any of that contamination from affecting this luminous uh, collective I am presence. Perfect, and thank you for explaining that because that's true. I forget that you know we are thinking. Well, I don't want to connect with that person. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it is. It's our high. You know, we're our highest aspect. You know, um, I love how uh, there's a, a, a book that's been written that that says you know we have to forgive ourselves for forgetting that we're connected to source all the time, the dream that we're that we're disconnected from source, and then we forgive everyone in the dream, right? Because we are really all aligned with one another fully in our, in our soul aspects, and we will find ourselves connected again. Right, and nobody is a victim. We're all experiencing exactly what we've agreed to experience at some level, and that's the people will fight tooth and nail, say, no way would I have agreed to go through this. but. We agree to go through those challenging things because we are transmuting literally hundreds of lifetimes worth of our garbage in a relatively short period of time. And we are receiving more assistance from the heavenly realms and the full divine momentum of the violet flame so we can do it. And it's not going to take us down. You know, our Father, Mother, God would not be allowing this purging to occur at this rate if it was going to cause more harm than good it totally would defeat the purpose of it so we need to just realize and when we reach that critical mass and complete transmuting uh, our misqualified energy we're going to move into that higher frequencies of the new earth and it's going to be glorious all right. Well, I thank you for all of this dialogue and for this conversation. I really feel like it's so spot on, not just for right now, but really, again, we've we've been transforming and transmuting this whole time. Even if you start from 2011, 2012, when people there was another large wave of people waking up, but now it's like exponential. Right. And so this dialogue is so important uh, for people to have an awareness. And again, before we go into process, I want to make sure that everyone knows eraofpeace.org. So that's E-R-A-O-F-P-E-A-C-E dot O-R-G. You can find all kinds of information there. Uh, and again, 
Uh, Patricia is doing weekly vlogs, so video uh, blogs where you can listen and there's meditations and just always inspirational information, downloads. And really, it helps us feel like we're not alone in this process, right? Because right now, I know that some people are feeling somewhat isolated or they're not sure where to go, what to do. So if this information resonates for you, there's a plethora <laughs> of information that, that Patricia has. And the beings of light are giving us information, guiding us through this process because it is so happening so quickly. And so the vlogs and the newsletters, as uh, Aurora said, are free and you can sign up to receive those and you can easily just unsubscribe if you decide it isn't what you were wanting or whatever, but uh, to just to keep in touch and to keep aligned with whatever resonates in your heart. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. So um, we, I guess if we can go into the process, that would be wonderful. Okay. I'm going to just do a little bit of an intro and this will be a guided meditation. So if we'll just do this on the holy breath, on the in breath, we're breathing into the heart of God. On the out breath, we're breathing all that light into the physical plane. Our breath is our connection to source. That's why we have our first breath at birth and our last breath as we leave this physical plane. So just breathing in deeply and out deeply, knowing that with every conscious holy breath you take, which is every single breath, maybe not always conscious, but certainly every breath is a holy breath, but consciously knowing this is your holy breath will move through this meditation that's been given to us by the company of heaven. So breathe in deeply, go within to the divinity of your heart. I'll be stating this in the first person, so we'll each experience it individually, but knowing that we are serving as surrogates on behalf of all humanity, and we are doing this individually and collectively on behalf of humanity, the elemental kingdom, and Mother Earth. Humanity and all life evolving on this sweet earth are in the midst of a greatly intensified purging process. The divine intent of this accelerated cleansing is to help humanity move through this facet of the unfolding divine plan much more quickly so that we can clear the way for the fulfillment of the next step in our ascension process. The legions of life from the realms of Illumin Truth have revealed that the divine plan for 2021 involves you and me and the rest of awakening humanity co-creating an unprecedented quantum field of comprehensive divine love that will result in an evolutionary shift of consciousness that will permanently sustain the presence of unity consciousness for humanity and all life evolving on Mother Earth. In order to help us accomplish this accelerated cleansing, we are being offered unprecedented assistance from the heavenly realms. As we participate in the following activity of light, our Father, Mother, God, and the company of heaven will bathe the earth with the most intensified frequencies of three sacred flames from the core of creation that humanity is capable of withstanding at a cellular level. The first is the purifying violet flame of God's infinite perfection. The second is the mother of pearl resurrection flame and the third is the sacred flame of God's comprehensive divine love. The sequence of these three sacred flames will flow through the collective cup of humanity's consciousness and our unified I Am Presence to purify, resurrect, and then recalibrate through God's comprehensive divine love the frequency of vibration in the earthly bodies of humanity, the elemental kingdom, and Mother Earth. 
this will occur in perfect alignment with each one's divine plan and the highest good for all concerned. We now begin by taking a deep, holy breath. I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of every man, woman and child on earth. All of humanity's I am presences now merge into one luminous being of light that is cradling Mother Earth and all life evolving upon her within the divinity of our unified heart flames. I take a deep conscious breath and instantly every person and Mother Earth begin breathing in unison as one holy breath. Within the embrace of our collective I Am Presence and our unified heart flames, I have the ability to transmute the surfacing negativity and to raise the consciousness of my sisters and brothers in the family of humanity above the chaos in the outer world. This will help them to easily perceive the inner guidance of their I Am Presence and to remember the divine mission they have come to Earth to fulfill during this cosmic moment. In the name and by the power and authority of the presence of God, I Am, I invoke Saint Germain and the legions of light associated with the fifth dimensional violet flame of God's infinite perfection. To blaze this sacred fire with the power and might of a thousand suns in, through, and around every electron that makes up the atoms of humanity's physical, etheric, mental, and emotional bodies. Sustain this violet flame and double it each hour until these earthly bodies are fully assimilated into the perfection of our fifth dimensional crystalline solar light bodies. Now, beloved ones, expand and intensify daily the mightiest action of this violet flame through all nations, races, cultures, creeds, and religions in every country of the world. Blaze this violet flame through every person's home, place of occupation, and overall environment until the perfection of the new earth in all of her resplendent glory is manifest for all life. Now, expand, expand, and intensify daily the mightiest action of the violet flame in, through, and around the cause and core of all doubt and fear in the earth, on the earth, and in the atmosphere surrounding the earth. Transfigure humanity's creative centers into expressions of God confidence, trust, hope, and inner knowing as the patterns of perfection for the new earth are tangibly co-created by people everywhere through the unified consciousness of comprehensive divine love. Now, expand and expand this intensified violet flame of purification and transmutation in, through, and around the landed surface, the waters, and the peoples of every country, province, state, city, town, and hamlet in the world. Establish a mighty focus of the violet fire in the etheric realms over these locations and intensify this purifying activity of light daily and hourly with every holy breath I take. Now, in the name, love, 
wisdom, power, and authority of humanity's collective I Am Presence, I speak directly to the heart of the violet flame. Sacred fire, embrace every man, woman, and child, the entire elemental kingdom and Mother Earth in the purifying, forgiving, healing, and transfiguring substance of your light, which now causes the consciousness and feeling of God's comprehensive divine love to flow through every facet of life on earth. Let this purifying essence purify, saturate, and transform the atmosphere wherever life on earth lives, moves, and breathes. Now, beloved Saint Germain, direct your legions of violet flame angels to encode the divine qualities of the violet flame in every person's heart. These qualities include mercy, compassion, forgiveness, justice, liberty, freedom, victory, transfiguration, oneness, and glory. This gift of the violet flame will help humanity learn to use our light to the fullest as we co-create unity consciousness and the cause of oneness and comprehensive divine love on the new earth. And so it is. Now, through humanity's collective I Am Presence, I invoke God's resurrection flame and the flame of comprehensive divine love. On the holy breath, my Father, Mother, God, and the angel of resurrection envelop humanity, the elemental kingdom, and Mother Earth in the most intensified frequencies of the Mother of Pearl resurrection flame that we are capable of withstanding at a cellular level. This sacred fire begins gently resurrecting into the highest possible frequencies of light, the now purified energy vibration and consciousness of every facet of life on earth. I breathe in deeply and on the holy breath the collective I Am Presence of humanity now ascends in consciousness into the very heart of our Father, Mother God. Instantly, our God parents embrace this luminous being of light in the full divine momentum of their comprehensive divine love. As I experience this awesome blessing, I hear the melodious tones and I absorb the celestial fragrance of this wondrous expression of our Father Mother God's love. I breathe in deeply again as the resurrection flame lifts our collective I Am Presence into higher and higher frequencies of our Father, Mother, God's causal body. Within this all-encompassing divine matrix, I begin to see templates and archetypes reflecting the very highest patterns of God's first cause of perfection. These are the divine patterns that the sons and daughters of God are destined to co-create on the new earth. I pierce into the core of purity within these celestial patterns. As I do the splendor of these glorious expressions of the new earth permeate my being. Now, with humanity's collective I Am Presence, 
I witness the individual I am presence of every person encoding these patterns of perfection on the 12 fifth dimensional crystalline solar strands of their DNA. This is occurring in perfect alignment with each person's divine mission and their highest good. As these patterns are encoded on humanity's DNA, they initiate an awakening into a higher level of enlightenment and clarity. This is resurrecting a new level of divine wisdom within every person's heart and mind. In a flash of enlightenment, we all begin to know and understand what we have volunteered to do to help co-create these celestial patterns on the new earth. This realization is being recorded in our etheric records and imprinted on our conscious mind. This sacred knowledge will now be available whenever we need to recall it in the fulfillment of our individual and collective divine missions. Now, in deep humility and gratitude, we accept the opportunities that our Father, Mother, God are presenting to us that will add to the light of the world through our unified I am presence, we now consecrate our life force to be an open door through which unity consciousness, God's comprehensive divine love, and the full spectrum of the glorious templates and archetypes for the new earth will now flow to bless all life. For a sublime moment, I assimilate this experience as I breathe in and out slowly and rhythmically. I now gently return my consciousness to the room and I accept and know that this activity of light has been God victoriously accomplished this sacred and holy day. I also accept and know that this light will increase in power and might daily and hourly with every holy breath I take. And so it is, beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am that I am. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about everyone else, but my whole energy field feels very, very lit up, expansive and tingly. <laughs> wow, that was just amazing, Patricia. Thank you so much for... You're very welcome. Yeah. We are so blessed to do this work and each and every one of us has this golden thread of our collective experiences from our myriad lifetimes. And it's essential that we all weave our golden thread. Nobody's golden thread is any more important than anybody else's. So listen to your heart. You're going to be guided in amazing ways and pay attention and respond. Oh, absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for all of this time, for your time and for all of this magic and for all the work that you're doing for the collective and for humanity and Mother Gaia. 
I'm in deep, deep gratitude for your walk and for your choosing to incarnate and be here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you so much for the light you're adding to the world and all of the blessed people that are joining us now or that will listen to this on replays. God bless you all. And remember, your time is at hand. Yes, our time, the time is now, the time is now. So thank you everyone for joining us, for being part of this collective family and for opening your hearts and for giving us your time and really for being a part of that magic because I know that for sure, the more that we do this and we do it collectively, we are amplifying the outcome. And so it's so important that we continue to gather together and, and really to ground in this energy that's all around us, but we can have it right here. And really, that's, that's where the power is. That's where the love and light is, is within us. So thank you all. Yes, many blessings. So thank you, Patricia, so much. Again, eraofpeace.org. There's so much information there and so much love and light that Patricia shares with all of us. So please check it out and, and go to her website. It's very magical. Um, I know that there'll be events, uh, potentially live events. No, you do, do you know of, of any plan for you to do live events in the future or not? At this point? I'm sure we will, but right now we're not. And so the World Congress, the 35th, annual world congress is going to be in august it's going to be a virtual event free to everyone who's interested a six day two hour a day event so that information is on the website okay fantastic thank you for sharing that perfect perfect all right everyone wishing you many blessings we'll see you next week with gary renard same bat time same bat channel again patricia thank you for this magical time together and many blessings everyone see you soon